I'm sorry I cannot be there in person. I'll be talking now about how TDCS works for tinnitus, but also for many other things as well. My name is Maroon Bixen. I'm a professor of biomedical engineering at the City College of New York. These are my disclosures. So for those who haven't got an introduction to TDCS yet, uh, or have not had a chance to use it, it's a pretty straightforward technique where a low intensity direct current is applied to the scalp that pushes current through the head and through the brain. And so this application of weak direct current to the head is being tested for many different disorders and also as a tool to enhance cognitive function in, in healthy individuals. And it's because of all these applications that TDCS has gotten a tremendous amount of interest uh, over the past decade. One index for this is the number of publications that have appeared uh, with TDCS. This is actually a log plot um, on the right, uh, giving you the sense of how quickly excitement around this technique is growing. And it's certainly not just uh, tinnitus. It's a wide range of neurological and psychiatric disorders spanning depression, pain, migraine, epilepsy, and other disorders as well. As I mentioned, it's not just used to treat disease, it's also being investigated as a tool to enhance cognitive function in healthy individuals, uh, looking at attention, looking at vigilance, looking at accelerated learning. Um, and there are some applications looking at some very um, uh, creative potential uses of TDCS to change things like jealousy, IQ, even prejudice. And so faced with a technique that has so many different applications, there's really two questions that my lab has focused its attention on. The first question is, how can a 9-volt battery, if we want to describe TDCS as something as simple as a 9-volt battery, do anything as complex uh, um, as the brain. How can TDCS change the brain? If I were to press a 9-volt battery onto my phone, I wouldn't expect to get better reception. Uh, when I press a 9-volt battery onto my brain, onto my scalp, why do I expect to be able to think better or to be able to treat disorders? The brain is in fact much more complicated than a cell phone. And the flip side of that same question is how is specificity achieved? So how is that 9-volt battery treating tinnitus uh, in Australia, and it's treating depression um, in England, and it's treating pain in Boston, and so on. So the question really comes down to not simply how does TDCS change the brain, but how can it be tuned to do so many different things? And this is a very critical question for us to face up front, because if I were to tell you that I have a technology that you could use to treat um, uh, learning disorders in children, uh, but also uh, help with ADHD, but also help with epilepsy, and also help with fibromyalgia, um, helping with cognitive decline in the elderly, um, helping pilots learn how to fly planes, helping people be better at math, helping people read better, and the list goes on and on. If I told you that I had a technique that could do so many things, your reaction would naturally be not to believe me at all. And the reason is that that sounds like snake oil, right? So snake oil is something, uh, at least in the United States, that is now illegal uh, because it was misadvertised as something that could truly cure everything. And so we've learned to believe that when something is promised to cure everything, it likely cures nothing at all. And with TDCS, we see claims that seem to sound a lot like this. So this is the question that, that we need to answer, and obviously I am a strong believer in the potential of TDCS, uh, and the reason I'm framing the discussion in this way um, is I believe TDCS is not snake oil. Um, TDCS can in fact be tuned to do all these different things, and that's the question that my lab has been focusing on answering using both engineering techniques um, um, and looking at the neurophysiology of the brain. So I could ask the question a different way. I could ask everyone to think about drugs and why pharmaceuticals are prescribed for so many different disorders. So we're willing to believe that if you go to your doctor and you have epilepsy, 
he'll send you to the store for a drug. And if you have Parkinson's, he'll send you to the pharmacy for a drug. And if um, your child has ADHD, he'll send you to the pharmacy for a drug. And we're willing to believe that drugs can indeed help with all these different indications. Now, why is that? Uh, because we recognize that drugs are not one thing. When we say drugs, so we're really meaning different chemicals with different formulations. Um, and so the drug that you're taking for depression is not the same drug that you're taking for ADHD. And a first step to understand the specificity of TDCS, or, or more broadly, electroceutical, so this the use of electricity uh, to treat disorders, is to understand that electricity and also TDCS is not one thing. There are many forms of TDCS, there are many forms of electrical therapy, um, and different forms are prescribed for different indications. The way we change formulation when we talk about electrical therapy and TDCS is by changing where we put electrodes on the body and how much current we apply through them. So whereas for drugs or changing the chemical formulation, for TDCS and other electroceuticals, we're changing the electrical formulation. Now, why is this thought to make the technique more specific? What you're seeing in this picture is a computer simulation of current flow through my head. There's an anode over the left side. There's a cathode on the other side. And so current is pushed through the head from the anode on the left to the cathode on the right. And the computer simulations are showing in false color which parts of the brain are being stimulated as a result, with hotter colors, so red and yellow, showing more activation, uh, and cold colors, blue, showing none. And what you can see from the image is that the areas of the brain under the electrode, so under the red electrode, in this case on the left side of my head, have more intensity than other parts of the brain. That current flows through the head and ends up appearing on, on the other side. Um, so it's not specific to just one region. And you can also see that it tends to spread a little bit to other parts of the head. But it's not going everywhere. And so the way we make TDCS specific is by putting an electrode or electrodes near the part of the brain that we're interested in stimulating. And in this way, we stimulate that part of the brain and not other parts of the brain. If that part of the brain is associated with a function that we're interested in modulating, let's say it's tinnitus or it's attention or depression, then stimulating in this focal way might produce specificity. To try to make TDCS more specific, we created a technique called High Definition TDCS or HD TDCS. Regular TDCS uses just two large electrodes that are placed across the head and current is passed from one to the other. With high definition, high definition TDCS, what you're using are high definition electrodes, which are those little small electrodes. When you use HD electrodes instead of large sponges, you can place many more electrodes on the head and you can also place them much closer to one another. And you can control the current independently at each one of those electrodes. So going from regular TDCS to high defi definition TDCS provides a tremendous amount of more flexibility, much more tunability, and a result much more specificity. In essence, you can identify a part of the brain that you're interested in stimulating, and software will tell you where to put electrodes on the head and how much current to apply to each one of them in order to stimulate the target specif specifically. And this is actually a solved problem. So this is a closed solution. You can identify a part of the brain, identify your optimization constraints, identify your equipment constraints, and essentially get a formulation, a stimulation dose that is optimized to deliver current to that part of the brain. One of the most common high definition montages that is used is the 4x1 montage. The 4x1 montage has a center and an electrode and surrounded by four cathode electrodes or a center cathode electrode that's surrounded by four anode electrodes. So in either case, the center electrode is the polarity that we're interested in and the outer electrodes are the opposite polarity. 
We've shown with computational models and now with neurophysiological recordings in people that when you stimulate in this fashion, you can deliver current in a very targeted way to the cortex. Essentially, the area that is defined by the circle of the ring is the only place that current is going to be flowing. And so by moving the 4 by one ring around the brain, we can actually direct the current to specific tar targeted cortical regions. And so the 4 by one montage is very advantageous when you want to stimulate a particular area of the cortex and you don't want to stimulate other brain regions. This slide shows one example of how we applied this technique, in this case, in the uh, investigation of the treatment of tinnitus. Now, in use of TDCS for tinnitus, as well as for other disorders, there are different hypotheses about where stimulation should be directed. And these hypotheses often relate to how people believe uh, the etiology of tinnitus is arising. So there are hypotheses that tinnitus relates to uh, attention, uh, and it may be related to the function of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. But there's also a hypothesis that it's a lower level uh, sensory dysfunction, uh, perhaps related uh, to the LTA. And so both of these regions represent targets for stimulation, distinct targets. Now you're seeing stimulation that's been optimized uh, for both targets, either using HD TDCS or regular TDCS. So here is TDCS being applied in an optimized way to the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex with uh, an electrode on the right and one electrode on the left forehead. And this is the predicted current flow pattern in panel B of how current is flowing across the head. Now while it does reach the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, um, it stimulates many other regions as well. Instead of using conventional TDCS, it's possible to try using high-definition TDCS to stimulate the same brain region. In this case, we have a center anode electrode surrounded by a cathode ring. And this is the neuromodulation uh, current flow pattern predicted by the modeling. If you compare panel A and B, you can see that in both cases, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is stimulated, but in the case of high definition, it's stimulated focally. The same thing is the case for the LTA. You can use conventional TDCS to stimulate the LTA, and you will stimulate the LTA, but you will stimulate much of the brain as well, because you cannot be very focal with, con with using conventional TDCS with just two large electrodes. As an alternative, you can use HD TDCS, and you can put the 4 by one electrode over the LT, producing a much more targeted current flow pattern. Now, it is an open question about which one of these regions is more important in the neuromodulation of tinnitus, and also whether you want to be focal or not. But what is not an open question is what is the best approach if you want to conduct hypothesis-driven research related to the function of a specific brain region. Because, for example, if you did what was in panel D, and you did TDCS of the LTA, and you stimulated, in this case, over three quarters of the brain, whether or not you saw an effect on tinnitus, you really wouldn't know why. Maybe it was because you stimulated the LTA, but actually, in this case, you're also stimulating the DLPFC as well as other brain regions as well. While if you used high-definition TDCS and you stimulated the left LTA focally, whether or not you saw an effect or not, at least you would know where that effect originated. And the same thing goes for DLPFC. So in regards to hypothesis-driven re research, where the emphasis is very much on target engagement, high definition has an advantage. Another adv advantage of high definition has to do with specificity, the issue I mentioned before. That the specificity of HDTDCS, its ability to treat one thing and not influence others, is thought to rely in lot in part on the ability to deliver current focally. And so when you use conventional TDCS and you are not stimulating focally, you lose the, some ability 
to leverage specificity by dose control.